Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So if you're trying to decide between living in Amsterdam or London, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna be covering things like size, transportation, food, weather and accommodation. So just as a quick overview, I currently live in Amsterdam. I've been here for about three years. Before that, I also lived and worked in London and I was there for quite a few years as well. So let's get into this size. I think both London and Amsterdam are portrayed really well in the media, but what is hard to get a grasp of is the size of each capital city. Um, and what I found quite surprising is that Amsterdam is about eight times smaller than London. So it's a significantly smaller area and it has a smaller population as well. And you can really feel this difference in size going from one end of London to another. I spent so much of my life on public transport whilst living in London and honestly it was quite exhausting and whenever I go back there now it feels so vast. Now Amsterdam in comparison, you know, of course it is a capital city, but size-wise it feels more like a village and for me personally I much prefer that. Transport. Now, when I lived in London, I mainly relied on the underground bus and train. There's also the DLR, overground, ferry, tram, crossrail. Let me know if I've missed any out. Um, so public transport in London is very, very strong. Looking at Amsterdam in comparison, I would say the public transport here is pretty good as well. We have the bus, ferry, tram, metro, and the train. And we haven't talked about cycling yet. Now, the infrastructure in Amsterdam is really good for cycling. A lot of people here cycle, so many of the drivers are cyclists themselves, and there is a different mentality um, to sort of looking out for cyclists or giving way to cyclists. Um, and I absolutely love the fact that cycling is so prevalent here, and you know it's great for your health as well. In London, you could also cycle, but I mean honestly, I would be a little bit terrified of doing that. Um, my husband used to cycle there, and he said that the infrastructure isn't as good, and that bike lanes are not connected very well. Also, the attitude of drivers is quite different. He encountered drivers that would just get mad at him. Some drivers would see cyclists as a bit of a nuisance. So yeah, the mentality is a little bit different over there. Accommodation. Now, from my experience, both cities are very competitive when it comes to finding somewhere to rent. Um, you need to find the listings quickly, arrange the viewings quickly, um, and make a decision quickly. Basically, do everything quickly. Um, and for a one bedroom property, uh, for London, prices can range from 1,050 to 2,460 per month. For Amsterdam, in comparison, the price range can be anywhere from 1,200 to 2,000 euros per month um, but this is really dependent on location amenities and transport links um, and these prices also do not include bills one thing that surprised me with Amsterdam and I think this is a function of how big it is it's not impossible to live relatively close to the city center like you, you know say like a 15 minute bike ride from Central Station but in London no way like to be 15 minutes away from let's say King's Cross you would either have to be like living in a shoebox or have a lot of money. Another thing that's different in Amsterdam is that it's not that common to see furnished flats. Um, and also if you take an unfurnished flat, sometimes you need to put in your own flooring. It's nuts. Um, and then when you leave, um, you know, sometimes you have to take it with you or you know, if you're lucky, you can sell it to the next tenant. Weather. Now the weather in Amsterdam and London is fairly similar. Amsterdam averages about a couple of degrees cooler than London. For Amsterdam in the summer, it can average anywhere between 10 to 20 degrees Celsius, and occasionally it can sometimes hit 30 degrees and above. Um, for winter, the average is about five degrees, um, but it can drop to below zero as well. It rains a lot in Amsterdam, especially in the colder months. And even though we have apps to predict the weather, they're not foolproof and the rain, oh, the rain is so sporadic here. So I would highly recommend having a good waterproof jacket. Now this is not a sponsored ad, but I wear my North Face jacket for much of the year. Um, and it has some cool features like the double zip, which is, is absolutely essential for cycling and the removable inner. Now, if this is something that interests you, I have an affiliate link below. This is a way that you can help support my channel um, at no extra cost. Thank you. And let's get back to the video. Healthcare. And when you move to the Netherlands, it is generally mandatory to buy at least a base level of insurance, but I believe there are certain exceptions for international students. 
you might hear people uh, joking about the Dutch healthcare system and how doctors will just prescribe you paracetamol for you know whatever you're suffering from and I've definitely experienced this but on the flip side I have also seen when the Dutch healthcare system kicks into action um, when something serious has happened uh, my husband had a bike accident and he fractured his wrist we were in A&E for four hours I think he had two x-rays and a third kind of scan um, the facilities in the hospital were pretty impressive and he was scheduled in to have an operation about a week later plus the aftercare was really good too now in london the nhs is funded by the taxpayer um, and unfortunately there can be long waiting times to see a gp a specialist um, or to have a procedure done when i was living in london i found it really essential to have private health care um, and this was either through work or i paid for it myself um, so that i was seen faster food <laughs> this is always a controversial subject um, but personally i think there's a better choice of food in london and this is a function of um, london being bigger and i think being way more multicultural as well um, i find that this is also reflected in the street food or the market food that you can get for example if you compare the albert cup market in de pipe here in Amsterdam with Brick Lane, uh, there is definitely way more choice in Brick Lane. Um, but that's not to say that there is not good food in Amsterdam. Uh, you just have to know where to look and you should book a table in advance. If you're enjoying this video, please could you do me a favor and hit that like button. Thank you so much. Museums. Now, most of the major museums in London are free to visit. Um, that doesn't include some exhibitions though, which you'll still need to pay for. In comparison, museums uh, in Amsterdam are generally not free. Ticket prices can range anywhere from you know, 10 euros to 25 euros a person, per person. Thankfully, there is something called the museum card, which costs 75 euros um, per person per year. Um, and this allows you unlimited access to many of the museums in Amsterdam and you know, the rest of the Netherlands as well cost of living now the cost of living in both of these cities is pretty high relative to the rest of the world however you know just focusing on london and amsterdam london is more expensive now it was hard for me to to find foolproof reliable data on this um, but let's just use the numbio website as a reference point basel in switzerland ranked number one as the city with the highest cost of living in europe London ranked number 10 and Amsterdam ranked number 20. Now, given the choice, I think that the quality of life in Amsterdam is better than in London. It feels more relaxed, more cozy, and it isn't as fast paced as London. Also, Amsterdam feels less materialistic than London. Um, it's, it's not so much about you know, designer goods and jewelry, flashy cars, that kind of thing. You know, sure, there are plenty of wealthy people here and expensive shops, but it's just way more low key here. Now, have you lived in both cities before? I would love to know your thoughts. Please share them below for everyone else to see as well. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, goodbye.